So in this tutorial, we're going to create this cool uh, morphing effect using the inheritance effector. So I'm going to start by creating a mo text object. And I'm going to type the. And I'm going to make the font Arial black because it's quite thick. And I'm going to leave the depth at 20 centimeters. You don't want it too deep. And now I need to make this editable. So a quick trick is to go to the connect object and then drop the mo text into the connect object. And I'm just going to turn on lines. Make sure that uh, nothing's collapsed. And then we click on the connect object and just click make editable here. And that gives us a polygon uh, text object. So I'm going to use this for a MoGraph cloner. So I'm going to create MoGraph cloner and I'm going to create a sphere, drop it in the cloner. I'm going to give the sphere a radius of five, might be too small, maybe six. And I'm going to set the cloner to object mode and I'm going to drop the text object in there. I'm going to set the distribution to volume. That way we can actually control the count. So I'm going to start with 200 maybe. And I'm just going to hide my text object now. And I'm going to keep increasing the count till it's legible. So say 600. Okay. So basically this is the starting point. And next, we're going to create the end text object. So I'm just going to hide everything. MoGraph, MoText. And I'm going to type end here. I'm going to set it to Arial Black. I'm going to make this editable again. I'm going to go to Connect. Drop my MoText into the Connect and then make the connect editable. And I'm going to call this end. And this is the target. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a matrix object, which is basically like a cloner, but it just has uh, empty position data. So we can basically use this as a target for the source. So I'm going to set the matrix to object mode and then drag and drop end in there. So we pretty much get the same result as a cloner. Distribution, again, we're going to set to volume. And we're going to set the count to exactly the cloner count, so 600, as before. And once again, I'm going to hide my end text object. So that's pretty legible. So we basically want to morph from the cloner to the matrix object. And this is actually quite easy. So just click on the cloner. Go to MoGraph Effector Inheritance. So we created our inheritance effector. And selection, I'm going to use the matrix. So basically, sorry, not selection. The object. I'm going to drag and drop the matrix in there. So that's our target. And Morph Motion Object. I'm going to check that. So now if we uh, play with the strength setting, it morphs from the to end. And I'm just going to hide the matrix as well. We don't need that any longer. So you can already see the morphing effect. So I'm just going to keyframe this. I'm going to go to frame 10. It's good to leave a bit of leeway, maybe even frame 20 keyframe control click the strength and go to 70 set strength to 100% and then control click and I'm going to use a smooth curve, easing curve I've got a shortcut uh, which makes accessing animation curves really easy so you, you just want to right click go to customize palettes and then you want to look for F hyphen curve show in F-curve mode and you just want to drag and drop that. 
Actually, sorry, it's not that one. It's um, no hyphen, F curve. Just F curve, one word, and it's this one. I always get them confused. So it's basically an I with a graph on it and an F. It's very useful. So yeah, if I click on a property, I just click that and straight away I get the curve window. So anyway, um, so that's our animation keyframed. It's looking pretty good. The problem is um, these spheres are actually intersecting each other. So we don't want them to kind of touch. No, we want them to touch, but we don't want them to kind of uh, intersect with each other. So we do this with a dynamics tag. So I'm going to go to the cloner, go to tags, simulation tags, rigid body, creates a dynamics tag. And I'm going to go to shape, sorry, inherit tag, apply tag to children, individual elements, all. If we play this back, the whole thing explodes and falls down. So number one, I'm going to set the project settings gravity, dynamics, uh, gravity to zero, because I don't want gravity. And we still have this problem, this explosion. So to basically uh, solve this, just go to the tag and go to force. And then what we want to do is we want to set follow position and follow rotation to one. Now the further you increase this, the more they kind of follow the um, keyframed animation from the inheritance effector. So we want to maybe increase these to 10. And now um, they're basically not intersecting, they're still colliding with each other and they're kind of following the original animation. So it's a very cool effect. Um, I'm just going to turn off the line mode, zoom in a bit, and it's hard to see but none of them are intersecting, they're all kind of uh, resisting each other. And as usual, I'm not going to go through the material part of the tutorial, or it's going to go on too long. I've got plenty of uh, material tutorials. And um, this is just the basic setup. Uh, there's a lot more you can do with the inheritance effector, some really complicated stuff. But this is the kind of basic introduction. And uh, if you found this tutorial useful, please share it. And thanks for watching.